Hi, very welcome to the film show. I'm Mike Sheridan, John by Dima Lumby. And yeah. uh, the 80 Scene Heart Club is back in his oversized NASA t shirt. Thank you. Uh, Brian, Brian Lloyd, uh, listener, uh, if you're not watching this, was just smelling himself. I it's was. Just, you just had to. to I had it up like this, and I was just doing that. And then I was like, ooh. And I was like, but it's a nice smell. Um, <laughs> we need to talk. Um, I did listen to last week's show. Ooh, we had, ooh, ooh. I did when I was. Which in, was our 30th, by the way. 30th. We should have had yeah. some kind yeah. of marking for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, I have a story to tell, and I'm sorry to be hijacking the show immediately. Does it involve you being bollock naked running yes. down Great Strand Street? correct, <laughs> correct and right, correct and right. Okay, so, the story was this. Basically, a couple of years ago, after the infamous article that led to death threats and all the rest of it, about the Big Bang Theory, I basically said, if the Big Bang Theory gets cancelled, I will run bollock naked right down Great Strand Street. I said that I'm a man of my word <clears throat> that is that is factually correct to say that I did say that um, I had every intention of doing it now here's why I'm not oh, going to like go. I'll tell you the story now this is and I know we don't really talk about personal stuff on this show <laughs> really, <laughs> really? Yeah. or maybe we do I don't know um, so right Okay, so basically what happened was <laughs> where is this going? No, I'll tell you what happened Dave, bit, you mute him if this nervous. gets too bad no. Okay. Okay. Right. So basically, what happened was after I sent that tweet, my girlfriend um, saw it, and she was like, "Is this at the time?" By the way, this was at the time. Okay. This was okay. at the time. Um, she was said, "Okay, if you actually do that, I'm going to leave you." And I was like, <laughs> "Well, that's pretty final on that whole me running down the street naked." And she was like, "No, no, no. I'm deadly serious. If you run down the street naked because Big Bang Theory got cancelled." I will leave you. And I was like, that's plenty, that's plenty motivation for me not to do it. So fast forward to like two years later, which is our time now. And, <laughs> and uh, she, I was like, I, it came up again. And she stopped. Our time now? Like, as, in, to, as well, opposed to the future. Whatever. <laughs> I'm saying flash forward to now anyway. And Max Ramsbottom uh, sent it after the thing after the thing was announced that it was cancelled Max Ramsdome sent a tweet about oh when are you going to run down the street yeah, I love Max he calls you on everything <laughs> damn him and his damn him and his oily hide anyways um, so yeah so the tweet the, the tweet came up and I was laughing he retweeted but again my girlfriend saw the tweet and she was like yeah that's I didn't forget about that you're you do that I will leave you so as much as I may personally want to strip naked and run down the street in, in celebration, in, in exultation of the fact that the Big Bang Theory is cancelled, were I to do it, I would then be, you know, a relationship of over 13 years would abruptly come to an end. <laughs> and like, so you're not doing it for love. Well, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, basically, like, but I'll tell you right now, let me say that the spirit is willing. The spirit is willing. <laughs> the spirit is willing. I would absolutely 1000% do it. I would be that happy. What but if the, the heart naked, isn't? What if the nakedness is inferred? I mean, how? You know, like you know, when when they have those sex scenes we in movies, pic- we could pixelate you. Yeah, yeah, we could. I mean, I do. No, but then he's actually no. See, then he's actually naked. Then I'm actually naked. So that, that's the issue, isn't that? It's public. Yeah. If the nakedness is inferred, like you know, when there's sex scenes in movies, sure. Not pornogra- pornographic films. Uh uh-huh. You have to wear the little cup things and yeah. cover things. So I'm still. We, I'm, I, I, would I'm you still get left? I probably I wouldn't want to chance it but I, I swear to god I would 100% do this I would 100% do this no problem I just is it that specific street she has a problem with I think it's or... I think it's the public nudity thing oh, okay just, just and checking. like I'm up for it like I really am up for this I have no problem whipping it out like, no oh we problem. can tell you're up for it <laughs> hey <laughs> But um, Brian's actually naked from the waist down. This is true. You can't see. Yeah. Of the thing. Aren't we all? This is but um, <laughs> but yes, I would do it, but I can't. And hopefully, this will draw an end to the conversation about me possibly getting naked in public. I think Start talking about you. movies, there. <laughs> Come on. Let me tell you, if no. I was going to do it, I would do it. And ladies, bring your camera. Once in a lifetime opportunity, okay? <laughs> would do it if I could do it, but I can't. There was so much going on in that statement. There was kind of like yeah. humility and fear. And then like kind of finished with cockiness. For well, see, I phrase. suppose that that's his version of, you know, public statement. I mean, we've seen so many made by our recent celebrities, you know, when they have to rescind things that they've said or done. Yeah. So yeah. that's Brian's <laughs> equivalent was, of it, was, I suppose. Yeah. Money, uh, you basically don't want to hashtag me too to whole lot of great strand who may be on it at that time possibly i mean yeah, it's a busy like you're like street, assaulting like, their eyes basically it's a busy yeah. street and look i will freely admit i look absolutely disgraceful naked i look absolutely awful like i'm not 
I'm a dad bod without the dad. Like that's not um, very body positive of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being, on, I'm being honest. Well, I think like, you look great. I'm being. I'm giving an honest appraisal. Well, I've seen like, you in the gym working hard, Brian. Yeah, you have. But like, I mean, as you said, like you look like you're wearing pajamas. You were wearing pajamas. I do, but I like to be comfortable. Like, um, actually, speaking of which, I did see a woman. Sorry, in a quick subject change, I did see a woman in direct sports, um, in a dressing gown. A few weeks ago, like a house coat, like a house coat. Yeah, I called them house coats, and people house were like, coat. You yeah, people never. Yeah, you know, somebody looked at me really funny when I said yeah, house coat. I would say house coat. I've never house heard coat. house coat. Before. You are ridiculous, people. <laughs> no. Go on. I am drawing a line under this. Okay. Start talking about movies now. <laughs> sure. Or I will stop producing. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the this is the red line subject for you. Yeah, See, well, look, well, well, look, it has been over five minutes. Yeah. And we haven't right started true, talking yeah. about fair, we, get, we, get, we get Brian the platform and you said platform. I did. Okay, there's a couple of reviews this week, uh, or just three actually. We're going to review mm-hmm. Black Forty Seven, and um, what else are we review? Uh, we're going to review American Animals. American Animals with Barry Keoghan. With Barry Keoghan, and then we're going to review. Final score. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So my, myself and D have seen that one, and at the behest of, uh, although you were kind of saying it's not at the behest of you, well, last week myself and D and Dave did the show, and you mentioned you were a huge fan of Sam Rockwell. So I we am. said we re- we said we revisit Moon, uh, wait, but wait, producer wait. Dave is a humble sort and does not want to take front and center. Um, so uh, D, you rewatched it recently as well, haven't you? I watched it. Watch, recently watch it recently. Great. I'm interested time. to see Ooh, what you yes. thought. Okay, so and then Dave's going to crack wise. As he is wont to do. As he is wont to do. In a deadpan do. manner. In a deadpan manner. Okay, let's talk uh, Black 47 first. We had the director, Lance Daly, and Stephen Ray come into studio here um, and interview each other, mm-hmm. uh, which is fun. We did that with Sam Keely and Patrick Frame before. Uh, you can see it, it on our YouTube somewhere some, below somewhere, if you're watching somewhere this. Somewhere down there. Yeah. yeah. Um, scroll, scroll, yeah. people. Scroll all the way. And if you're listening to this, we're sorry. I don't know. Open the app on your phone. Use some data. Um, <laughs> I like you can afford it. You can afford it. <laughs> you yeah. can afford Connect it. to some free Wi Fi, it's everywhere. Um one of the one of the things because I've only seen clips of this, so I haven't seen it yet. The you're the only one I've seen it. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Um, we're talking about Black Forty Seven. Black Forty Seven. Yeah. Okay. No, but one of the get in the room, Brian. Get in the room. I'm in the room. Get in, get I'm in the here room. because I'm giving her my full uh, attention. Probably out of shot. You're gonna give. <laughs> oh crap! Yeah, Charlotte right. and Owen a nightmare oh, to crap. edit later. Okay, sorry. But um, one of the uh, taglines for this, which uh, I didn't know how to deal with, because once you say John Wick, I'm like. You had my attention. Now you have my uh, <laughs> my curiosity. You now you have my attention. You know, and um, was it, like this is John Wick setting the famine. <laughs> that was genuinely. Uh, that was genuinely. I heard uh, that. I did yeah, hear yeah. that as well. Yeah, so they're like throwing potatoes at you. Like what's or the lack of potatoes? They're throwing other stuff for each other because is of he the using the potato potatoes? to brain a guy. Yeah. Like yeah. what that the could be cool. I'm yeah. sorry, but where the hell did that come from? You know what that quote is? That's trying to be like young and down with the young people, comparing it to John Wick. It is not effing John Wick. Sorry, but. <laughs> you were almost about to curse T. Oh my god oh, This film look, has made John, you feel some look, passion John Wick is an entity And you cannot just You know brazenly compare it to Another film Just like you know Offhandish like that It's just not acceptable You're dead right there Jamalumbi And it was Keanu Reeves birthday there the other day It was Yesterday Probably amazing saw that on your Twitter Yeah Okay so Did um, you see somebody said What are Keanu Reeves <laughs> three best movies and I said John Wick John Wick Chapter 2 and John Wick 3 I know it's going to be his <laughs> <laughs> difficult to argue with everyone said Point Break though Point, Point Break, Break was yeah. great yeah. I actually haven't seen that Point admittedly <gasps> and also call outs for The Matrix obviously but um, yeah. po- The Matrix is a great film Point Break is a really great film and Speed's a lot of fun as well Bill and Ted John Wick movies yes, are still his best true. movies Bill and Ted um, yeah. As, yeah Bill and Ted's a great yeah. show too but uh, as we want to do when we mention John Wick we go off in like tangents and we're like let's talk about John Wick yeah, for 10 minutes let's talk about Keanu Reeves for 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well he's a great guy with this movie with Hugo Weaving and uh, Stephen Ray. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, D. This is, this one looks like I've, I don't know a huge amount about it. From them, mm-hmm. we had the two lads in, and they were very nice. Yes. Um, how is it? What is it about? It looks mm-hmm. like it has a hefty budget for an Irish yeah. movie. Would it be right in saying all of those things? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I, <laughs> oh. I don't even know where to start with this. Right. But we should actually, no, let, no, let the let the. No, no, no I'm gonna see. I was just gonna say the review that's on site at the minute currently. Gav Burke. Gav, uh, Gavin Burke reviewed, and he gave it four stars. D, take it away. Yeah. So. Um, I, I am not of a similar ilk when it comes to this film. Look, everyone who I've talked to this film who saw this movie, and there have been like numerous previews kind of over the last few um, months. In fact, I saw this film maybe about six weeks ago or something at mm. this stage. Yeah, yeah. So quite a while ago. Um, but everyone, it just seems to have really divided people and some people 
love it and they think it's great. Donny O'Donnell they think it's called epic. it on the poster. Yeah. Yeah, 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 he called it an epic famine drama, although I would argue <laughs> how many famine dramas are there? But, um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's like, it's like well, a epic famine drama. Like, yeah, how do you, it is. Like, how do you? Yes, it's the, best, uh, yeah. it's the best drama about the famine ever made. Well, it's the only. Yeah, it's more point now, like Lance, Lance Daly, he did that movie Kisses uh, yeah. a couple of years yeah. ago. Kisses, oh, which I love, and I love film. his movie uh, Life's a Breeze as well, yeah. the one about the grandmother who puts all her money in the mattress and yeah. then they throw away the mattress and then they're looking through like the you know junkyard and everything for he's, it's so, gas so yeah. Lance Daly he's a very strong director uh, yes. he also made a movie with Orlando Bloom and Riley Keough called something Doctor was it a good doctor not at the TV show but it was something quite similar as well okay. Dave might have a Google there when he when he uh, gets a chance yeah. um, which was his first one I think going into American movies or yeah. mm-hmm. it wasn't a studio movie but it was you know Orlando Bloom God bless me, contact. But at some point in, in, in time, really he was a movie though. star. Yeah, Willie Kill's yeah. amazing, but yeah. it was very early in her career as well. Mm-hmm. So, okay, T, stop beating around the bush. <laughs> you are, you are, I've never seen you duck. You're dancing around this. You're you duck It's so really well. hard because I want to, you know, support Irish movies wherever I can. And not just for the sake of it, but because I do think that they have yeah. a really hard time, you know, with budgetary constraints and everything. Um, but I just didn't think this movie was very good. I really, look, it's very ambitious. I appreciate what it's trying to do. It's pretty much the only film we've ever seen that actually tries to handle the very daunting subject matter that is the famine. But for me, it just didn't work. I thought it was kind of crap. I thought that it, the first like act worked really well for me when it portrays um, our hero kind of coming back. So who's the the protagonist? Who's the hero? Um, So he is, oh, I forget his name. James Frischavel. Yeah, who's actually an Australian actor. Good day, mate. Yeah, not Irish, incidentally. Um, but yeah, he comes back to his family and they're all speaking in Irish and everything, which is really nice. We're for that authentic. Yeah. Mm. Exactly, yeah. But then you have the British soldiers kind of come in and ruin everything and, you know, kill his last rel- relative. Sorry, spoiler. And then he decides to go on this revenge rampage. So basically. he goes all the window shakes to barley on them. Yeah, well, m- more kind of revenge. Look, yeah. it, it is like, I think that Lance Daly has said that he's very hesitant to call it a revenge Western, but I don't know how else to describe it other than a revenge Western. But it essentially has its protagonist go around killing all of the like British soldiers and everyone who is kind of related to this incident that happened with his family. And it just gets very repetitive and kind of silly and over the top. And even like all of the British characters in it are like comically evil, like as in you can't actually believe in them. They're so ridiculous and over the top caricature wise. Now I've got to stop you there for a second, right? Because I know, because we talked about this off air yeah. before, right? I, I haven't seen the film yet. I haven't, I saw, I, I can't speak to any of it, but I know you were saying that like some of it was so kind of comically over the top as to be ridiculous when you just, you just mm. said that there. Um, but I mean, like historically speaking, Talking to the microphone. I Brian. am talking to the microphone. Myself and dear, like next to the microphone. I am. I, I was. Okay, anyways. Now you've made me lose what I was going to say. Yeah, so um, you were saying that it was kind of the thing that, like, it was over the top and being comical, mm. but, like, is that in terms of their performance of the actors or is that in the case of what how they, it's written yeah. how it's written and what they do? Because they did both, I'd say. Because I was going to say that, like, some of the absolutely atrocious stuff that the British did was real yeah. like you know what I mean like as in like the kind of stuff that seems like it would almost seem like villain yeah. villainess but like yeah. no they actually really did do that yeah. so I'm wondering what's no, that no no and it... I do totally like understand that and everything I just think that like it was just it was so over the top right. you know and I think it was in terms of like the acting uh, sorry in terms of the writing because like with the lines and everything like they wouldn't be that kind of you know obvious and cold hearted you know I I wouldn't think so anyway but I just thought that I don't know for me the whole idea of like a western using the famine as a backdrop didn't really work like I kind of thought it was almost like a bit insensitive or something like it was kind of it was really between like you know kind of it didn't really tread the line of kind of you know reconciling with this really like still traumatic period in like Irish history and a lot of like you know of the older kind of Irish generation and everything like my dad still talks about the famine as this you How know horrible your dad? <laughs> no 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 just about this like atrocity that like the British yeah. did to us and everything like there's a lot of sensitivity still there for like certain generations and stuff and then just kind of like sensationalizing it and trying to make it kind of this genre of film I just but they do that it didn't work they, for me they did that with World War 2 do that with World War 2 constantly yeah. World War 
all one concept. Yeah. You do that with everything. I know, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, somebody... We can't be insane. Well, like, we can't be like, oh, we're offended because we're... I, no, no, yeah. it's not about offended. It's not about offended. I think it's a case of, like, making light of it. I think that's the problem, that you're making light of it. But, I mean, I saw somebody kind of refer to it as, like, Ireland's Django Unchained. Oh. Which is a bit, like... Really? Problematic, yeah. I would say. Well, like, I mean, in the sense that, like, you know... Django Unchained was like, okay, fine, I got it. It was like a revenge western that kind of took in slavery. Mm. And is this doing the same thing? Well, I, again, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, so I can't speak to it. So, well, I mean, we're, yeah. what we're doing here is, and let's be fair here, I'm saying, oh, somebody said this about it. Somebody called it John Wick and the Famine. Yeah. And you were saying, oh, somebody else called it Django Unchained and the Famine. That's not the filmmaker's fault no. that people are making these yeah. comparisons about. So oh, I think well, fundamentally, yeah. you just didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, movie reviewers will naturally do that. And I mean, we were talking about that in relation to Dublin Old School being yeah. um, compared to Train Spotting and Adam and Paul and stuff. But like, I just thought that this film had a lot of issues as well, like in terms of when he actually goes about killing everyone it just felt like very repetitive or something it's like now he's going after this guy and now the British soldiers are catching up on him and now he's going after this guy and the British soldiers are catching up on him and it just it just didn't work for me yeah fair enough yeah um, I but I, I would still encourage everyone to go see it because some people it's had like people have loved it it's been polarising you know? yeah yes. yeah um, and it'll be interesting to see how this goes down because we've always yeah. invested in it and it's I mean it is nothing but a positive thing to see like I'm not quite sure what the budget was in this but yeah. it, you know, if you go weaving in there Stephen Ray and you know it's uh, it, you know it's set in the, obviously the 1840s and that's going to be 1847 yeah, 1847 because it's Black 47 Black 40 okay Brian I, did, I haven't seen the movie Brian I, I haven't know. seen it either but I'm just saying yeah, but you're, you're, the, you're, you're a nerd you're, but you're a nerd anyway the point being that with that kind of setting it costs money to set movies mm. um, yeah, sure. back then because it costs costumes and all that stuff so yeah look I mean people have liked it you weren't a fan of it at the same, same time Gavin Burke was gave a four yeah. stars so okay let's move on to the final score <laughs> yes <laughs> did you get to finish this oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah um, fantastic it's how so ridiculous how okay. ridiculous is this film okay let, let, okay let's set this one up they, producer Dave you haven't had a chance to watch it yet I have not because you're you're a fan of the WWE or Dave Batista uh, not particularly no you just uh, like the sound of just, it I like the yeah the premise yeah, so the premise. Yeah. Because uh, Brian hasn't had a chance yeah. to watch this one yet. The premise is uh, Dave Batista is like, at a certain point, and okay, let's, I'll just I'll set this one up. I watched this with Joe. And I was like, right, watch. Because Dave Batista is just smashing lads and like killing lads Fantastic. and all of that stuff, yeah. right? And it's essentially uh, everybody at Upton Park, which is West Ham's ground, are being held hostage uh, while they play, I think it's Dynamo Kiev. Um, and, you know, the story unfolds in whatever way. Uh, it's going to unfold. So I said to Joe, right, watch. What's going to happen here is he, they're going to, it's going to cut to a, a point that some guy's going to be on a computer and he's going to be like, he's ex-SAS, he's ex, or whatever. Yeah. He's been trained in, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, who is this guy? Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. just list of this shit that he's done. You're like, oh. Mm. You don't even need that with Dave Batista because he's a mountain. Yeah. And they literally had to cast a bigger mountain <laughs> to, like, to be like the bad guy, to be one of the bad guys in it that he fights. Um, yeah. To make but, it look like he's got, yeah, he's, like, he's he's got, got like there's guy. a threat. Yeah. yeah. Like a threat. And Pierce Brosnan is in four, five, four scenes. He looks, Pierce Brosnan's looked like he did five days in this and just used that as an excuse to grow a beard. Um, <laughs> it is. Which is an authentic beard. It is an authentic beard. He grows a mean beard as Pierce yeah. Brosnan. Does, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, he's actually fun in it. The whole thing, D, is just fun. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, so premise-wise, in case anybody doesn't know, it's essentially Dave Batista plays this kind of veteran who uh, goes to a football match and then suddenly... Takes his, takes his like, niece, but she's not really his niece. Is, yeah. Uh, one of the people who's in his former squadron. Yeah. Um, he made an order that led to the squadron being killed. Oh, so he's yes. got that guilt. Oh, yes. He's got that guilt, Brian. Oh, you know? yes. Yeah. I, love yeah. I love it already. I love it already. Oh, it's so good. Um, and yeah, essentially the football stadium then gets taken over by a group of Russian terrorists because they're like the... Yeah, they're, they're the go-to terrorists. They're the go-to terrorists. But here, let me, tell, let me ask you this, right? Do the people in the stands know? They no. don't no, know. No idea, Brian. They no idea. They're yeah. just watching the match. Ah. They're just watching the match while Dave Batiste is booting around the top on like a motorbike. bike. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a helicopters and stuff and some guy's a machine gun sh it's, and this is all must... happening in the middle of a match yeah, yeah. and it's like 90 yeah. minutes like yeah. Yeah. amazing and then it's yeah, like it's it like keeps good. cutting to the like the 90 yeah. minute and like the it's countdown it's almost in it's almost in um, real time actually yeah. the oh timing God. of the movie but there's a scene in it where so Batista well jumps from one bit of the stand Upton Park is just like a really crappy old stadium as well yeah. like as the Premier League goes and goes from one part of the stand to another part of the stand on the motorbike yeah. and it's just about as the team is about to score I'm like oh look what they've done here um, 
okay, what, what we we knew we were going to get fun yes. of this because it, it just seemed to know it was making all the right noises. It just mm-hmm. seemed to know exactly what type of movie it was. Yeah. It was it's not pretentious at all. No. Batiste is built for movies like yeah. this. And it's not taking itself too seriously either. Good. Because I find that's such a problem with so many action movies. Like, for example, The Equalizer 2, I would think, would be an example of an action movie that was taking itself too seriously example, recently. Yeah. You know? Very earnest. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't think works because at least not at this point in time in the with these particular kind of movies. I mean, I think you get away with it with the likes of John Wick because there is kind of emotion behind that and there's sure. trauma behind it and everything, you know. But when it comes to this kind of a formula, like, you know, it's over the top. Like I was talking to, and we'll have interviews, by the way, with uh, director Scott Mann and its star, Dave Bautista, which was, he was so, so cool to talk to. But I mean, they very readily admitted, yeah, it was pitched to us as Die Hard in a football stadium, stadium and we so- were like, we're well, all there. But you know what? Yeah. I love how in the in the in the emails about setting up the interview with Dave Patisse, they're like, Dave has said everything he needs to say about the James Gunn yeah. situation. I'm like, no, he hasn't. <laughs> Do you he's anything? still to this he's day. Still, he's still like, yeah. he's like, screw Disney. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, how did you go on with Patisse? He seems like the nicest man. Oh my gosh, we got along so well. So first of all, we were just kind of geeking out about the movie itself. I was like, Dave, this is so much fun. This is just like a great popcorn movie. And oh, he was Dave. like, yeah. He's on a first name oh, basis with old Dave. Oh, we huh? are. Well, we are. Like, Davey B. <laughs> um, but yeah so we talked about uh, the movie how much fun it was we talked about his work with Pierce Brosnan and he had nothing but high praise for the guy everyone he, seems to have nice yeah loved about Brosnan. him and Scott Mann gave me a little anecdote as well about how um, Pierce Brosnan brought his family out to dinner one night like Aww. he just sounds like the nicest guy but we talked about like his career in general as well and some of the stuff he has coming up now that Guardians 3 is essentially on hold so I got I got um, 15 minutes with him and we ended up just chatting loads so yeah. it's a really good they're always interview. the best kind yeah. of interviews yeah. when you're just exactly. having chats with people yeah. Um, yeah I don't think he's going to do Guardians 3 I don't think that's going to happen I, well when I was asking mm. what's next in the pipeline he says well now that Guardians 3 it's essentially kind of cleared up my schedule so he's talking about the other um, films which I'll talk about a bit in movie news actually um, but yeah so he he didn't even kind of mention that Guardians 3 is happening okay so this is the same one that Hurricane Heist this is the same release formula that Hurricane Heist had yeah. and that it's and that was Clive Owen one that you interviewed, you interviewed in front of the line and too. Yeah, and on, and on, yeah. yeah, but anyway, Cinema, but yeah. the Hurricane Heist you loved as well. We thought mm-hmm. it was really good fun. So, how yeah. does it, how does how did it get released? Does it premiere on Sky Cinema and then? Yeah, so essentially, it's released both on Sky Cinema and in cinemas at the same time. And the way it's kind of working at the moment, because Sky Cinemas has only really started to do this this year, is that it is a limited enough release. Yeah. I don't know exactly how many theatres it'll get released in at this stage but I'd imagine not maybe more than a handful which is kind of a shame I, but I, I, I think that if people can like go out and see it because I wish because uh, I, I watched a screener copy unfortunately because yeah. I had to for like you know we, yeah, we both did yeah, yeah we both did yeah yeah because I had you your know. name across in case you ended <laughs> yeah. up on the internet I was like was nobody like, better because <laughs> if you upload it <laughs> then I get weird. in trouble yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. but I would love to see this kind of movie on the big screen you know yeah um, I, I think uh, hopefully this turns into some form of a franchise or at the very least because Scott Mann does a really good job at this yeah, as well yeah he does yeah, uh, yeah the action's just a lot of fun and he hits the, mm-hmm. he hits it tonally he hits it perfectly yeah uh, do you think maybe that the scene will be called final score slash full time extra time extra time Ex- final scores it's already inferred that it's full time yeah true enough so final score <laughs> full time to sudden death sudden death that was already, death. That was maybe already extra time will be the th- th- prequel oh yeah, yeah true yeah. Yeah. okay yeah um, well, score golden goal. But do do if you do like, if you they have done the goal anyway. <laughs> we know so much about football. Of Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord, Brian. I'm sorry, Good lord. I'm sorry. Um, I I would hope that this leads to uh, more leading action roles for Dave Bautista oh, um, yeah. because he's like he just seems like such a good egg, mm-hmm. um, and he's su- su- got that physicality, like obvious physicality yeah, on screen, yeah. but he can act as well yeah. mm. as anybody who's seen Blade Runner. But what yeah. was nice as well about what we were talking about was because he mentioned that one of his favorite movies was um, actually To Kill Mockingbird and I was like oh that's a really interesting choice for you would you like to maybe do some more kind of dramatic roles in the future and he was saying that he'd actually love to kind of pursue like the big kind of meaty dramatic roles but that he finds it extremely difficult because of his physique so yeah, his yeah. go-to tends to be action movies so I was like you keep fighting the good well, fight Dave we'll see I mean, you even in though, all I mean, kinds the, of the stuff. Rock is a bar for uh, wrestlers um, turned actors because yeah. he's the biggest movie mm-hmm. star on earth now and yeah. I'm sure he's the same yeah. you know like yeah. and even then 
The Rock had to go to TV with ballers to, oh, to yeah, get a role where he got where he really kind of got it to, got to act, and his physicality wasn't the thing at all. Mm. Other than been an ex professional footballer, so I actually that, thought that happened. Sorry to interrupt. I thought The Rock was uh, he had some decent enough acting, which didn't really re- or rely on the whole physique thing in Southland Tales. Yes, yeah, he good Tales, call. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think much of the movie myself, to be honest. But I thought he was. I thought he was solid. In it. And that yeah. was early enough as well. Um, yeah, and he did that other one. It was a follow Richard Kelly's follow up to Donnie Darko. Yeah. yeah, there was another one he did called. I think it was called Gridiron Gang, where right, it was kind oh, of yeah. like um, he was this like football coach or something. The, uh, yeah, and he walk and tall too. He can act. Rock and yeah, he, he act, could definitely act. Well, I think it's right, and it's interesting. Uh, check out the interview on Online D. Yeah. But it's interesting that Batista kind of said, "Look, my physicality kind of places me in a certain." Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean I can see him doing a Fast and Furious movie. One hundred percent, see him doing a Fast and Furious. Movie. Yeah, yeah, easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean like I know yeah. like that scene like that scene he, that scene in Blade Runner he's only got one scene in Blade Runner 2049 but it really yeah, sucks yeah, it's great. Very good yeah. Yeah. and the short the short he did before that movie yeah. was great yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were I'm, talking about him in um, Hotel Artemis as well who mm. was another great role he had this year and it was so cute hearing him talk about uh, working opposite Jodie Foster because he was like getting to work with her like for me that's like getting on the Oscar stage like it was just such an honor and I was yeah. like you're so cute <laughs> you're so nice and I made him laugh squish your head like he'd squish oh, your head he would like literally like, oh, yeah. he would literally yeah. kill you yeah. he would literally yeah. rip you like a phone book okay. uh, he wouldn't kill me oh no, no he wouldn't We're but I'm just then. saying yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so check out the interview on the line interviews with Scott Mann and Dave Batista on search on the line wherever you get your podcasts uh, we'll throw something in uh, maybe the article or something like that that we write on the, we don't even write articles on the show anymore we'll, we'll figure out the, we'll, we'll put a link on yeah, the YouTube we'll, or something yeah. and figure out because we want, we want to drive people towards those interviews because I think <laughs> they're really good fun um, Brian yeah. Amer- American, Amer- American, animals. American Animals with Barry Keoghan. Yeah, Barry uh, Keoghan. And this is one of the few that we've actually agreed on a star rating in recent weeks. <laughs> yes, actually, yes, we okay. did. This, 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 is, this sounds mental. Mental. <clears throat> Execution is mental. It's a bit different. It's very, very different. Okay, yeah, it's very, very different. Essentially what it is, is it's one part of it is the actual people involved. It's based on a true story. Essentially what it was about was it was a group of college students uh, decided to rob this um, book of illustrations about... Um, um, birds it's a very very famous book and I think it was worth something like it was worth a couple of million oh yeah it was very very yeah. this very very uh, valuable book that was kept in a really low security uh, library in the college that they go to and as the, you know the movie starts off and it's you know the guys explaining the real life guys explaining how they did it and why they did it and not even why they did it but because that's what's kind of makes it kind of almost disturbing I found was the fact that they were just sort of like oh well it was there and we were just kind of gonna rob it and you know it's not like they needed the money it's not like any of them had any kind of extenuating circumstances they did it purely just because they could and you think, oh, wow, is this going to be a documentary? But then automatically it flicks into this very well-directed, very kind of stylized heist movie where it's them planning it out and they've got escape routes and they've got all this sort of thing. And then it cuts back to the guys talking about how they did it while the actors are w- kind of walking around them and doing it. Like, it's very, very odd. Like That sounds like the My Scientology movie. Well, Louis Theroux does at the end of that when he's making the movie because he can't get access so he's making a movie on yeah. the scavenge. It's not as it wouldn't be as sort of as clearly defined as my Scientology movie is because yeah. in that like that's an actual documentary yeah because yeah. that's an actual documentary but in this it's weird I've never seen a movie do it as well as it has been done mm. like this where it's you know the documentary elements complement the dramatic recreation of it and even the parts where it doesn't kind of follow um, you know the actual complete. Uh, how would you say the the the, the, the factual narrative. yeah the, the factual mm-hmm. retelling of the story it still kind of works because the guy's like oh well this is how I saw it happen and then the other guy's like well this is how I saw it happen oh so you're getting kind of dual aspects so you're yeah, getting dual yeah. aspects and sometimes you see the scene twice over yeah, you know, okay. according to each version that's yeah. kind of cool yeah. that's a bit like I Tanya, wasn't it what they used yeah, yeah I was thinking about I Tanya, and even like I, I Dolores was kind of interesting yeah. recently in that the it affair used, as well yeah yeah in that it uses both interviews with the actual person and then you've got the recreations but I mean they're intertwined yeah. as opposed yeah. to side by side which yeah, is like fascinating Tanya, they have the actors actually yeah kind of yeah, yeah, yeah break but the fourth the, wall yeah. yeah and the scripts but the scripts are based on what those people said in the actual interviews yeah. so it is quite close you yeah. Know? yeah yeah okay what did you think of it i really liked it as well yeah i thought the format really worked um i thought that it was genuinely like a gripping kind of thriller and then i thought that the four 
um, actors in it. Barry Keoghan, Evan Peters, who people will recognise from the X-Men movies. He was Quicksilver. Remember, he had those like iconic, remember the slow-mo slash. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah he's great. He's kind of, he's probably the lead and then Barry mm. Keoghan would be kind of second build. Um, and I can't remember the other two actors. Blake were... Jenner. Blake who Jenner people would know from Everybody Wants Him on the Age of 17. So he was one of the guys, and then I I wouldn't be as he's, familiar he's with the other handsome, ones. He's fierce handsome, that guy. Fierce oh, handsome. Oh, he's so handsome. So dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say dreamy. Okay, oh, you oh, actually dreamy. just did a whole like, mm. <sighs> like like rival Michael B. Jordan yeah. handsome. Well, in a different way. I mean, he's kind of he's kind of more boyish. Oh, you he's know? a pretty boy. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, boy. yeah, yeah. He's very pretty. He's a pretty boy. Um, <laughs> you got me blushing now. Anyway, um, no, they're all really, really strong yeah. actors in it. And then, yeah, like Brian was saying, it's fascinating to see it intercut with like the actual guys as well, and the fact that they're talking about what they were like when they were students. But we're meeting them after they've been to served, prison yeah, for what time. they've done, yeah. which is incredible. And then. What I found kind of interesting about you basically see the build up to the heist, the heist itself, and then kind of the aftermath. For me, the only thing that w that was kind of a downside to it was when you get into the aftermath, it does slow down a bit in terms of pacing. But what I did really like about it, which again, I thought was so different to what we see, is that it actually handles the like moral complexity yeah. of what they did because yeah. I mean it was it doesn't pretty doesn't glamorize anything yeah because no. it was pretty horrible what they did to this poor like little old librarian Lady, yeah, yeah. you know um, and that's so, yeah. a, and that's one thing I would say as well that like you know you look at something like you know the Wolf of Wall Street for example right which I think you know absolutely glamorizes oh, you know absolutely, yeah, like yeah. just like oh my god it's the best thing in the world to have all this money and to be like snorting cocaine off a prostitute's ass and all this kind of thing and makes it seem like really over the top and really really fun but then when things start to go wrong for the guy you know there's maybe one or two scenes where it's like oh no he's in a boat and oh he's gonna crash and then it's no, like oh I, I think with something like that I get what you're saying there but I think with something like that it's so heightened that with say the Wolf of Wall Street which is the example that you've yeah. given I, th I think you're not pandering to the audience and going okay like you know this is wrong though you can't do, look what happens when you do the drugs yeah, and you do the, but like, yeah, yeah. that should be a given that you know any reasonable person could look at Leonardo DiCaprio in that role and go oh my god he's so good he's amazing in this but still go yeah but Jordan Belfort was a piece yeah. of shit oh yeah of course but you like know, I mean, you don't need to show the real life yeah repercussions for reasonable I don't yeah. think anyway I can make that sure. <laughs> can make yeah that see this is it yeah but I mean there is it, it's like that thing that like this is going to sound so arsey right but there was that thing that I think it was John Luke Goddard said oh here we are oh, no where he are. said where he have you ever mentioned John Luke Goddard in the show before I have not 31, have, 31 episodes in never once mentioned John Luke Goddard anyways till he, now I think it was Goddard I don't know but anyway basically <laughs> I what think he, it was Goddard but what he said was what he said was was that there is no way to make what he said was was that there's no way to make an anti-war movie because if you do if you do your job right you're going to make war seem really exciting and thrilling so you just can't do it like and it's the same I think that's the same with something like Wolf of Wall Street is that you can't make you know being a terrible person and being really morally corrupt and enjoying the excesses of it. You can't... I, I, that, you comes, can, that comes down to you as a person and how you consume the content and whether you have empathy or you don't have empathy. Yeah, That's I That's what know. that comes yeah. down to. I'm watching well, Succession at the moment. I watched a couple of episodes of it last night. What do you think? Me. I really like it. And you can see it getting going. But it's quite Shakespearean and how it, like, yeah. the play and how it works. And It's funny. I, I didn't like expect it to be yeah, funny. Yeah, and I mean, it's uh, your old pal, uh, the director, uh, Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. Adam oh, McKay, yeah. He yeah, directed yeah, the first episode. He directed the pilot. Yeah. They, they produced it too. Um, but there's a scene in, I think, the second episode where um, this is a super rich entitled family. Uh, it's kind of loosely based on the Murdochs with an element of the Trumps, you would say. And uh, they're playing softball, like rich people softball. Um, just on the land, and it, oh, it, yeah, one the, it's like the gardener's kid or something like that. They're like immigrants, Horrible. and he's like, "You want to? You get you 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 get a home run here, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll give you a million dollars." And the kids like, and he's like, "No, seriously." And he writes a check. Karen Culkin writes a check from the hit a million dollars, and you're like, "You absolute piece you, of yeah. shit!" Yeah, but it's never you, that character acts in that way. Yeah. you know, like, and it's still just the same character. The, the writing is layered, but. It's not like glamorized anyway. This family's rich, but they're still kind of shitheads. Oh yeah, you know of what course, I mean. You don't yeah. need. You don't need to. I don't think you need to amplify yeah. that for the audience yeah. to go. Oh, but look now, he's. You can't do that. I mean, like, yeah. it's different with Wolf of Wall Street or American Animals. And that it's it's based on a true story. Yeah. So there's more well, responsibility. Well, American Animals definitely doesn't yeah. like yeah. pander yeah. or yeah. anything like that because I mean it's it doesn't tell. It shows. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean like. 
yeah. And it's just, it's, it's so well acted and it's genuinely like, and some bits of it are really, really funny because mm. I mean, the whole idea of it is kind of nuts. Like these four students like had the balls to just decide to like steal Wrong. a bunch of these like hugely, hugely valuable books from a university. And like you see them, they disguise themselves as like old men and everything because like, oh, and they say this is uh, this is actually a really sad line. Everyone in the audience actually went, oh, um, they said the elderly are the invisible in society. So mm. that's why they, they dress them. up as the elderly. And that's where they rob them. And they rob an elderly person as yeah. well. But I mean, middle-aged. Yeah, she's more middle-aged. <laughs> middle-aged. But I mean, I don't know. I, I just said she's a little old one. She was a little old one. Yeah, yeah I suppose, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah it's um, true, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the whole idea of it is kind of mad. But it's it's so, it's so really, really well done. It sounds like it's amping up a little bit. I want to get into news now because now you've got some news on, on future movies that are coming up. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like it's it, like the that dead zone of um, like August, end of August mm-hmm. and releases. It's amping up a little bit now in mm. terms oh, of yeah. the, oh, yeah, the quality yeah, of films that are coming out. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 I mean, there's something there for everybody this weekend. Yeah. Is, isn't there? Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Between Good like the final and, score. Um, and we didn't get to review it now because the screening's later on this week, but there'll also be the nun out this weekend. Yeah. So. Mm. The scurdy film. I don't want to see it. Yeah. I know, I have to go see it. I yeah. hate those jump scare ones. And you have to see it on the IMAX screen. Good luck with that. Yeah. You're going to shit yourself, boy. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> don't wear that shirt. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move on to some movie news. What have you got for us, D? Okay, so I thought I'd start off with, um, I don't know if it's like three separate ones, but um, most of these stories are kind of coming out of the Venice Film Festival, um, which started last week, I think. Yes. Um, So the first story I'm talking about is to do with First Man, which had its premiere and it's been getting really, really good, strong reviews, um, particularly for Ryan Gosling's performance. I mean, even one of the most negative reviews that I read of it was from Time that was basically saying that the film can't keep up with Ryan Gosling's really, really good, strong lead performance, Mm. which is an interesting one, you know. Um, But I mean, it's been getting a lot of praise. People are saying like that it's a good old fashioned epic. Another outlet described it as um, what it said that this will do for space movies, what Saving Private Ryan did for war movies, which is quite a comparison. Um, But I suppose the main story I'm taking from this is something Brian reported over the weekend because I just thought, oh, the world we are living in but even with a movie that is based on Neil Armstrong that has Ron Gosling playing the role and it's just like all positivity and all about you know how far we come as a human race and in exploration people still find something to get offended at and to have a problem with and in this case it's the fact that they didn't include footage of the actual American flag being placed on the movie. God like all Michael yeah. Bay like <laughs> Just yeah, that's like that. apparently it. And then Buzz Aldrin came out and say something then as well. Buzz Aldrin's annoyed. Yeah, everyone came. No, everyone, Armstrong's family came out and were like, "Shut up, his ticks." Yeah, basically. basically, you haven't even number yeah, one. You haven't seen Buzz the movie. Buzz, Buzz Aldrin, I think, was saying, "Yeah, they should have had that." Did he? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't yeah, read yeah. that part of it. Yeah, I mean, like the first, thing of, second comes right after first. You know, <laughs> 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 I walked in your face, Moon. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like. I mean, the way that uh, Ryan Gosling talked about it was, was he said that it was, you know, this was an achievement for all mankind. It wasn't just an achievement for America. Yeah. And, now, the, and the actual flag would have made it very patriotic in tone as opposed to like more universal. Yeah, think, exactly. You know? But not even that as well. It's the fact that it's not as if they don't have a shot of the flag waving on the moon. Like it's in the trailer. You see it happening. Or oh, like, lit- you literally don't have a just, plan it's on it. Literally, yeah. It's literally, that's oh, literally. For... And of course... You know, the dickheads that were all against this, sure enough, were all Fox News and, like, feckin' Marco Rubio and all them dickheads. So, like, <laughs> screw them, like, what do they know? But it's, it's, this is one of those things where it's literally a tiny fraction, a tiny, tiny fraction of people have a problem with this. People just need and to stop just... getting offended whether you're bleeding Fox News or you're seeing it or just stop. Just watch the film and I think... Yeah, you put especially that re- when you, you have really, the film. Yeah, but you put that really articulately when you're saying Armstrong's, like, it's based on mankind and how yeah. mankind has yeah. evolved and, like, still so find a way. Still so find a way to polarise it and to be like, no! And, and politicise it. And politicise it, yeah. yeah it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. ridiculous. Anyway, the film sounds amazing. Yeah, I yeah. really want to see it. Um, and Oscar season is heating up. Mm, it's heating yeah. up already. I think it's out here as soon as um, October, yeah. which yeah. is great. Yeah, yeah. 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 Should, yeah. should have a good run there. It might be too early for it in terms in terms of the awards. I think Hugh Jackman in, uh, in his new the movie. Front runner, the front runner. Yeah, yeah, that looks like an interesting he's, one. That's Jason Reitman as well, who I love as a filmmaker. I think he's fantastic. Bill Burr's in also. 
Second there you go, movie Bill. this year after Tully. Tully, yeah. Mm. The best of the year so far. That's it. I definitely agree with you. That's a five star movie. What else have you got, Dee? Um, so also coming out of, I actually wrote my notes in my hand this week. Uh. Uh, <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Uh, coming, also coming out of Venice Film Festival <laughs> uh, yes I will make him laugh you can't look directly at you look <laughs> Brian expl- ex- explain that you're doing that oh, yeah, Park before it's people from, think you're being racist yeah at Sarah Park it was when uh, Cartman was doing Jennifer Lopez the thing okay I was just yeah I was just stopping you from trending on Twitter you're welcome sorry Gwandi A Star is Born is oh, yeah. getting huge huge reviews uh, reviews Reviews. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, people are saying that this is the for, a front runner for the best picture Oscar, even more so than First Man. I think that um, this is getting bigger praise for that. And it got an eight minute standing ovation when it premiered at Venice. So there mm. you go. It's going to be huge. Does sure everything get standing ovations at Venice, Brian, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, there there is that thing of, <laughs> like, I will admit, I like, I wrote the thing. It was like, yeah, it got an eight minute standing ovation, but like your ma could get eight minute standing ovation in Venice. Yeah, she could. I'm just she saying. She deserve it. Yeah, she could. She deserve it every minute of it. But like, it's the kind of thing of like, the audience reaction are never really a kind of good barometer I think because like in Cannes like I mean I've heard that like they like literally boo and like throw stuff at the screen and it's like nobody does that anymore what are you doing um, but no I mean all the reviews I've read for A Star Is Born have said it's incredible and they are really really positive and I mean everything I've seen about it looks great Yeah. but what I think is also interesting is, is I think it was Sean Penn um, he was doing I think he was doing Mark Maron a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago and he literally stopped and talked about A Star Is Born for like five minutes mm. and said how amazing it was Jennifer Lawrence as well yeah I think yeah. Bradley Cooper's been really smart in uh, what he's done with it because he, he filmed it because he shot bits of a glass and really last right. year yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he sings in it too as obviously Lady Gaga is the lead and she's getting incredible reviews yeah. 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 Um, but uh, Lauren, Jennifer Lawrence has said what he has done here is amazing but Cooper uh, to his credit he's a movie star has been around a long time is thinking oh, okay people are saying this is good I'm going to start showing this to everybody Yeah. Um, and that's something that Ben Affleck probably should have done with Gone Baby Gone mm. but Cooper had the smarts to go okay I'm going to get all of my friends I'm going to get Robert De Niro Sean Penn Jennifer Lawrence to talk about it and not lie about it but to say actually yeah this is this is just great we saw something similar with A Quiet Place yes you know Chris yeah, yeah. Pratt and everybody was coming out going this is deadly mm. um, and that shows uh, how you can build buzz early mm-hmm. um, I'm interested to see how Lady Gaga does in it because yeah. she's getting uh, look it's her first movie she's getting absolute yeah. raves yeah 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 I mean I know she did like American Horror Story and what have you but like yeah I mean the fact the fact that um, so much of it kind of depends on her character kind of being uh, I don't want to say a wallflower, but like the, yeah, the, the, the whole yeah. thing where the character seems to be anyway that like she doesn't look like a yeah, glamorous exactly yeah. yeah yeah. But of course, as we know, it's Lady Gaga and she's yeah. this like literally polarizing figure in music and like is so confident and da da da. See, I'm just really interested. But yeah, no, I'm really interested to see what happens with it. I, I really yeah. am looking forward to it. Yeah. I mean, it's such an iconic story. It's touched so many generations. This is why it's been brought to the big screen for like this is the fourth yeah. movie yeah. adaptation of this story you know and I think that um, another thing I'm really looking forward to is the music mm. I know it's just going to be incredible Bradley you know? Cooper has a great voice does not yeah. yeah he's got a really good Give voice that, like, uh, yeah. like we all know Lady Gaga is, like, is, has an incredible <laughs> voice she's, yeah. you know, she's platinum whatever selling artist what do mm-hmm. the kids on the Spotify on the streaming services <laughs> yeah. I don't know sure yeah <laughs> okay um, okay what else do you have to um, well this is kind of more a smaller one because Brian sent it to me last minute um, Suspiria <laughs> Thanks. Suspiria is getting more kind of mixed reception at Venice, but I mean that's not too surprising. It's oh, no, getting God. comparisons to like Mother, just in terms oh. of like it's polarizing and just that it's it's cinematography, like it's gorgeous to look at, but it's effing weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, which yeah. I'm not really surprised about. I have no, no interest um, in seeing Suspiria. Yeah. Well, None. You- just looks crap. Yeah, looks like looks like it insists upon itself. Ooh. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah, I could see that. I mean, it, like, I mean, it's it's definitely the kind of film that's going to provoke a strong reaction, one way or the other, whether you love it or hate it. Yeah, like. I haven't got the energy to care that much. So I'm just not going to go and see. It. Yeah, I can understand. Like, I don't think you could watch it passively. Like, yeah. I think that's, I think that's true. But like, th- that's not a bad thing. Like, I think that's. I think if if something like that kind of demands your attention and demands you pay, you sit up and listen. I'm and not watch. saying it's a bad thing. I'm no. just saying I can't be arsed. I know. Yeah. Mm. I'm just saying, just for people watching and listening and 
taking it in. I think the, you were saying the trailer made your palms sweaty. It did. It really did. I'm not kidding you. The first time I saw it, I was really like, oh. <laughs> but you, and I mean, that's, I mean, I know they're, they're quoting Murder Day in mm. the sense that it was polarizing. Yeah, it could be yeah. as polarizing. You hated Mother. I detest And Mother. I really yeah. liked Mother. <laughs> there you go. I hated Mother. I walked out of that. Annoyed. Fuming. Yeah. Fuming how much I hate it. Hasn't, and Jennifer Lawrence's career hasn't quite recovered from it either yet. And I'm not surprised. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean there's, there's ups and downs. Yeah. Brand yeah. New yeah. There. Of course. I don't know. It just seems to be a thing with best actresses when they win an Oscar. They just don't get particularly. Yeah, yeah it's easy the F. Murray Abraham curse. Yeah, like, that's yeah. what they call it. It is kind of a, it is a thing. It yeah. is a thing. And I'm yeah. not just saying this, like giving out, like, oh, I'm a woman. We have it so <laughs> I'm a bad. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you are. <laughs> no, but I think, no, but like, I mean, comparing it to Mother, I think is, I don't think it'll be as kind of, see, the problem I have with Mother, not to kind of harp on about it, but the problem I have with Mother was, was that it was just so up its own. <laughs> that this like, movie probably is going to be too. I though, think it will, but Mike like, saying, yeah, yeah, but like, I mean, in the way that Mother was like, oh, it's really about this, you know, I think. Mother Earth. Yeah, and all that. See, that's the only thing that annoyed me about it was like, I had my own interpretation coming out of it and I really liked that, my little interpretation interpretation of it I liked it I thought it was smart I could have written a thesis on it is this like your interpretation of when life gives you lemons (laughs) oh yeah did you hear about this D for oh, years, for so years. This is brilliant, right? You just derail this for a second, right? D for years thought that when life gives you lemons was a positive thing, as in like, oh, I've got some lemons. How great! Now I'm going to make lemonade. Well, that's like you just you took it perfectly, so no, no she took it wrong. Dee, no, D's an optimist. Yeah, well, like that's what I'm saying. But she had to give you lemons. Just w- go fuck the lemons. It wasn't. And <laughs> yeah, that's like that's yeah, that's how most people would do. But it D thought it was a positive. It also wasn't just me. It was also our editor, Charlotte Reed. So yeah, yeah sure. Except she, if she goes one step further, she eats lemons. I yeah. don't yeah. eat lemons. Have you ever seen that? No. Yeah, not, she not, li- not unless it's tequila. No, no. She will literally... I, we did it before. We, did, we actually did an experiment, right? We got her to eat like half a lemon. You didn't do an experiment. You just asked her to eat a lemon. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. That's we not gave, an experiment. I said we gave her the lemon to see if she was full of shit. And she wasn't. She literally just <laughs> chewed you know down like funny? it was nothing. Brian tried to slice it. And he was like... Ah. Oh, no, it was disgusting. Yeah, it was, it was really absolutely funny. horrible. Like, it was hilarious. It's lemon. Like, it had a bit yeah. of flavour. But she was just like, yeah, actually, wait, you didn't, you eat some of it as well. Yeah, but I didn't enjoy it because when life gives you lemons, that's not a good thing. (laughs) You know, I'm going to try a lemon and I might actually like the taste of it. Maybe it's like... It's all going to come back around full circle then, Dee. You'll be like, oh, now I know. Okay, let's move on to the revisit. Uh... Uh, at Dave's behest as we said from the start we called it we did kind of strong arm you've been up you've been up since crazy early last week Dave you were doing another podcast you'd literally produced another podcast uh, before you did this one he's a champ sorry everyone <laughs> yeah I did yeah he's a champ he's a champ he is. Uh, and I was like Give me, what's your favourite movie give us a movie and you were like uh, <laughs> you put me on the spot mm, yeah. uh, so we, we kind of circled around Moon and you rewatched it as well. <laughs> see what you did there <laughs> that was totally intentional <laughs> <laughs> you mean you have to love Sam Rockwell uh, to enjoy this movie or you have to be a fan of Sam Rockwell because it's him it's just him uh, yeah it's it, like it, 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 Duncan Jones who directed this as well has has done some has done a couple of bad ones in a row oh, I don't know about that now. yeah well, hang like, on a second he had Warcraft and then he had Mute that one that you detested yes but, so that's not so that's, great but yeah, that, Mute was that's brilliant literally I, literally, I, literally, I literally just said that <laughs> I would say that Mute was brilliant Source Code was fantastic I really Mute was it. brilliant no, or not mute. Moon, sorry, Moon was brilliant. Source code was fantastic. Warcraft was <laughs> kind of decided to mic. Warcraft was grand for what it was. I mean, oh I th- yeah, you kind of liked it. You're weird. Mute was terrible. <laughs> mute was muck. I will give you that. Mute, mute was muck. But I liked Warcraft for what it was. I thought it, that it was a noble failure. Yeah. Um, but Moon, weird. I thought. <laughs> what are you talking about? You and your lemons. Um, but. <laughs> Moon, I'm no, I really, I really did enjoy Moon. I loved Moon. I remember actually, Duncan Jones came over to Ireland for it. Like, I talked to him after. Was it before I was years and years ago? Um, and before I plucked you from obscurity. Oh, you would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, give you a job. Anyway, were you there like with a pen and paper trying to get an autograph? Was actually, yeah. <laughs> I think I remember that peer. Um, at what? the time. There was a peer. Sorry to... I remember that at the time because actually my college paper had an interview with him as well. So there, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. Um, um, well, okay, Dave, give, give us your hot take on Moon. Yes. Uh, 
I wouldn't necessarily say it's a hot take. Well, I no, quite enjoy the movie. Reviewed movie yeah. I do really like the movie. I really like Sam Rockwell. I thought yeah, it's one of his better performances. I think uh, he very much convinces as playing various versions of himself. Like very understated as well, mm-hmm. I thought. I would think so, yeah. Um yeah, I, I think there's there's a lot to it. I think it's quite a different film. I can understand why people don't like it. Because it's like, generally, when with a sci-fi film or something, you're expecting aliens or something malevolent or something. But it's it's not really. It's just kind of a Benign. working man kind of thing. And it gets quite depressing, I would say. And it's, uh, the, I suppose, the first twist as such where he, well... You, you can know. say it. You yeah. can say it. Yeah. yeah, where he starts to realise that he's a clone, essentially. I think th- there's a comparison to be made there almost with The Matrix, where he kind of wakes up to his reality kind mm. of thing, and he sees that rather than in The Matrix, where there were batteries or what have you, that he realises that he's essentially just a replaceable cog in an engine kind of thing. And there was a broader analogy there, a broader metaphor there. I think so, and it's it's. I thought it was, I suppose, a bit dystopian that, like, like man goes to moon you know but it's, it's just not a bother it's just a job you know it's like we're able to put people on the moon we're able to do cloning and they're just using him essentially as a battery or yeah. you know mm. a laptop and uh he's kind of coming to terms with that and arguing and fighting with the new self who wakes him up to this is i thought it was i thought it was really good um I thought, obviously, I mean, the opinion on Kevin Spacey has changed, mm. but him mm. playing the AI, like, I remember even re-watching it last week, I still kept expecting the AI to be malevolent, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Kind I, mean, of, I think that's, that's kind of an yeah. expectation yeah. we've got but that thing with the, with from the, sci-fi films. Yeah, well, yeah. With that, that, that twist with sci-fi movies is, is done in so many of them, Oblivion yeah. as well, and um, was a Passengers as well. Yeah. Like yeah. it's it, that seems to be the kind of go to shock people twist and um which which Christopher Nolan did incredibly well in the prestige, which obviously isn't a sci fi movie, mm. but I think was How's why the in Have you seen the prestige? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but why that ending was so Holy Terrible. shit, that, that's yeah. incredible because yeah. you're not yeah. expecting it. But now with sci fi movies, it just seems to be, and I'm not criticizing the movie at all, but it does seem to be a kind of a default. Mm. It let's shock people. He's a clone. Yeah. Mm. I yeah. mean, like, it's, it's funny because, like, Duncan Jones said it at the time that, like, it, how he kind of came to this movie was, was that he was in a long term relationship um, and he was working alone a lot. And he's kind of started to think about, like, you know, the idea of being separated from somebody who you feel is a reflection who is able to reflect yourself back to you like as in a partner will be able to tell you look you're really being really annoying or you're being whatever like your missus when you said you might be naked on the street nice little comeback around there yeah but then what he was saying was like right okay well then what how would he kind of extrapolated it out and he'd be like right what if i had to live with myself and then just how does that kind of work and that's the kind of i think that's what makes it so interesting and why i think as well that they didn't kind of set it up as this big reveal because i think the drama in moon comes from someone having to someone having someone having to, to confront themselves yeah you know that kind and of Solaris way. does something similar Solaris well. does yeah. something similar I mean I know and again that's the wife thing and yeah. whatever but in this like it's very much like you got to look at your worst possible qualities being played out in front of you you know that kind of way isn't like when he's really kind of angry and snippy with the clone version of himself yeah and then the other one is like trying to dance around and he keeps hitting the thing off like mm. so I think that that is more to me more interesting than you know sort of like oh well you know we got to space and all we're doing with it is just mining you know yeah. that kind of way mm. but um I, I love I love Moon, yeah. You made you made a really interesting point last week, Dave, when you said like seven psychopaths, Rockwell is great in that. And he's not, like he won the Oscar for three billboards. Yeah. And yeah. I remember a whole campaign being around Moon for him to get nominated for an Oscar yeah. for Moon, but it didn't have a budget to, you know, they have to pay for the marketing yeah. budgets and all. Yeah, to it was get on it was on a bunch of lists for kind of one of the biggest Oscar snubs yeah. was yeah. the fact that he he's didn't so get good in it. But yeah. he's really good in seven psychopaths as well. And mm-hmm. that's and that, that really feels like a role that Martin McDonough like because Colin Farrell's role in that is relatively generic. Yeah. yeah. Given how yeah. good he was in yeah. Bruges, that really is uh, that really is Sam Rockwell's movie. Like he's just a great actor. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting work, really yeah. interesting work. But that's yeah. what I almost think that Three Billboards was more about. I think it was a bit like you know when Sandra Bullock won her award for you know the Blind yeah. Side, and then there have been ones in the past like um, you know Paul Newman for the Color of Money. I think it's almost like I, I think that in that case, money, yeah, he'd made like yeah, yeah, it's, before that. it's yeah. more like he should have about won well before that. Exactly, it's more about giving an award for kind of your Scorsese career's work. The part, you know? yeah. the part is a great yeah. movie, but he should. 
should have won multiple times. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I think it's to do with like, you know, getting recognised for your career and how talented you are as an actor. Because I I don't know, I thought Sam Rockwell was good in Three Billboards, but was it... You know, award worthy. No, yeah, I, I think, think, so. I, uh, think so. yeah. I yeah, I remember going. I went to three billboards in America last year, um, and I was really looking forward to seeing. It. I remember actually because it was a theatre in New York, and it was between that and Lady Birds that we were going. Me and my friend Eva were going to go and see. And we were like, "What are we going to see?" And we we're like, "Right, screw three billboards, whatever the time suited or something." And I think the hype just heard it, but also with Rockwell's character in that film, there's such a turn in the character that yeah. it's very difficult to buy. Mm. And from like when the same way that um, I think Seven Psychopaths was Sam Rockwell's movie. I and like you say Francis McDormand was you know the star of that film for me Woody Harrelson that was Woody Harrelson's movie yeah, really yeah, and when that character wasn't on screen anymore I just stopped enjoying the film I agree I think yeah. that it was it was less engaging or less yeah. I don't know there was something he's just that a brilliant character he's so him, yeah. much he's so much like first of all Woody Harrelson's just great mm-hmm. yeah like when Woody like and you see that season of True Detective and that's why the second season of True Detective died and it's ah, so much and there's many moving parts to that mm-hmm. but that that just dynamic between him and Matthew McConaughey but he's just got this bluster he, and he can act as well you see with the, with the last Planet of the Apes movie mm. he can really act and he can play kind of villains or with something like Zombieland he can do comedy oh and, yeah. Oh, I yeah. Think, yeah I think Woody Allen's range, one of the, yeah. but he's one of the most unheralded actors mm. working today because he just fits into roles yeah. and yeah. elevates material do you ever see Rampart Rampart is brilliant I haven't seen Rampart Rampart no. is brilliant yeah it's this really kind of like you know, one part kind of social drama, then one part thriller, and yeah. then one part kind of psychological thing. It's brilliant. It's really good. It was written by James Elroy, the guy who did um, LA Confidential. Black and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's it's really, really good. Okay, uh, I have a suggestion for the uh, revisit next week, and I'd like to see if, if you guys get a chance to watch it. I'm fairly certain it's on Netflix, but I could be wrong. It's Narc. It's a Joe Carnahan movie. Oh yeah, because uh, with Ray Liotta um, and Jason Patrick, and Jason Patrick is unbelievable he is so good in it and um, one of those actors that just hasn't quite caught that yeah. uh, wave or, or whatever Speed 2 kind of did that yeah, well, yeah. but I mean he's, he's a great actor and he's really great in that so maybe what are you thinking Narc for next week we, we, can we all agree on Narc for next week for the never heard of it yeah. sure <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Car- Joe Carnahan's second movie but his first movie uh, that, that people kind of embraced it is be- beautifully made it's gritty as shit but it's absolutely excellent so, what was that other one Dark Blue remember that one Dark yeah. Blue with um, Brenda Gleeson and, and, and uh, yeah, Ron Sheldon directed it did uh, White Men Can't Jump and, yeah. Uh, yeah Brenda Gleeson's incredible in that as well yeah. another James Elroy one okay so let's talk about briefly because we're just going to go uh, we're just under the hour about the revisit when are we going to do the revisit pod when are you and D going to do the revisit pod um, when are you going to take the finger out Brian uh, hopefully soon enough um, because you have a pilot I have a, we kind of have the bones of a pilot made yeah so yeah. we need to kind of sit down and do I, I don't know like I mean like there's there's there's, there's stuff coming with entertainment.ie as a whole yeah and you know uh, you know Kind of trying to time it around. Trying to that, time it around. Yeah, that, I guess. Yeah. You want to have a couple in the candle, Dave? Don't you? Together. Yeah, we will. Yeah. We will. I like. I. I said this to you. Dave yeah. doesn't produce enough podcasts. He needs another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll throw another one on your on your plate there. <laughs> Splendid. And can, yeah. See, you love him. <laughs> yeah, he's happy with it. Yeah. No, but um, hopefully, yeah, we should have something up. I'm hoping next week. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we should have the first. We'll make a big splash. But yeah, the hunt for Red October. Hunt for Red October. Or so yeah. So I actually, I really like the format of it as well because you're giving a bit of trivia. Oh, trivia before trivia. before you have your discussion yeah, I think it's about good, the yeah. film okay thanks Mill for joining us this week thanks to producer Dave uh, thanks to Owen Ronan for shooting and Charlotte Reed who's off but will likely be editing this oh, we'll, yeah. ca- we'll catch us next week bye, bye, bye.